welcome to Teachers Off Duty. If you've never joined us before, my name is Rebecca Rogers. I am R Rogers World on all social media. I'm Bree, Honest Teacher Vibes on all social media. Sorry, I forgot to order. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lauren Woolley, Mrs. Woolley in fifth, all social media. And I'm Vinny Thomas. My name's Mrs. Thomas English on all social media. Apart from Instagram, it's V Thomas English because someone stole my name. Some <laughs> some bugger stole. You always say some you bugger give... stole my name. Some little turd stole Free my Vinny name. Thomas. Free Vinny Thomas. Free my boy. Give him his name back. You thief. <laughs> he probably doesn't even have any, any idea who we are. Yeah, he, he's probably the, I think the account has like three followers, and they're like, "Why do I keep getting random people requesting to follow?" Listen, me? I have people. Okay. I've heard of other people, though, that have, like, heard of a, an influencer that was going to be changing their name. Like, Frazzled, for instance. Mm -hmm. When she got married and she wanted to change it to Mrs. Frazzled, somebody, like, went and took that username Aww. on purpose and was, like, trying to, like, Charge you know, get money it. out of oh her. Oh, my gosh. I, like, at least that's, I think, I think. I know I've heard no, that know happen before. Thing. But I was like, I'm like, people are shady. Like, just give people their name. That yeah. is crazy. That's my identity. <laughs> Did you see when um, identity theft is not a joke, Jim? Because when <laughs> millions um, of families have suffered every, every year. Because when TikTok first started, loads of people kept doing that with like universities and colleges, mm -hmm. where they'd be like, "Okay, we're gonna just take Yale University and make that a username." So then these they universities have to, yeah. Yeah, would have to pay them. That is Very insane. Clever, That's but. genius. It's That's those smart. things that make me just want to say, "I quit." I done. Okay. I'm done. And that is what we wanted to talk to you guys about today. Let's see. Well, look at me go. But teachers quitting like it is no secret that teacher quit talk like the mass exodus of teachers it has been insane this year like it's been mm -hmm. bad for the last couple of years but this year it has just reached an all new level and we wanted to talk to you guys about why it's happening like let's be real about what's going on mm -hmm. why teachers are leaving and what are some ways um, that it could be fixed and we can I just reverse to, it? I just want to let you know, guys, I'm actually quitting um, the podcast. I'm, I'm done. Don't even like that. Hold on. Now I got to go take my anxiety kidding. medicine, bro. Sorry. Hold on. Can you cut the funny, camera? Lauren. No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. But teachers are like <laughs> legit quitting. So yeah. for most, most people that follow me know on March 22nd, I quit. I was having some health issues at work. Mm -hmm. Had to, you know, be taken from work in an ambulance. Never had that happen before and then was like consistently getting sick. My blood pressure right. was high. They thought I was having panic attacks at school. My oldest sister is a nurse and she was like, hey, yo, I know you're not feeling like the kids are stressing you out or like the environment is stressing you out, but your body is trying to tell you, you know what I'm saying, this environment is stressing you right. out. So mm -hmm. for me personally, I stepped away from the classroom because I was getting so sick. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know a lot of teachers have their various reasons like why they have, you know, stepped away from the classroom and there's nothing wrong with it. If you end up leaving and doing what's best for you and your family that's okay but there are a lot of things that we're faced with this year so this wasn't actually this year but like I mean I have my own kind of little teacher quit talk story mm -hmm. now, I, I'm still in the classroom but there was a point in time um, where I was just in a very like an environment that I could not work well in. It was stressful to me. I ended up going to the doctor and I got diagnosed with generalized anxiety. Mm -hmm. yeah, they tried to put me on medication for it and stuff just because I was so amped up every day going right. to work. And um, it was to the point where I had taught at this school for three years. And I was like, if I can't get another teaching job somewhere else, I'm going to leave education altogether. Because I can't, like, I'm right. like, I physically right. can't right. function. Right, right, right. So um, I ended up, I started um, talking to recruiters in the Air Force and I started the process of uh, becoming an officer in the Air Force. And I started like, you know, filling out the paperwork and talking to the recruiters and doing all of the exams and stuff. And I was oh, wow. studying for the, wow. the AFOQT, which is the officer's qualifying mm -hmm. exam. And um, I ended up getting the job at my current school June of that year. So it was wow. kind of like, you know, I don't, clandestine that it happened that year but I was like wow. I came this close to like not right, being a teacher anymore else. because yeah. I was just so I was so over mm -hmm. it the stress level I couldn't take it I had a very similar experience when the pandemic hit and everyone went completely online mm -hmm. and you know for those that don't know me um, when I was in college you know my two paths I was thinking of taking was either teaching or forensic psychology and doing that kind of like with the FBI like I've always loved that kind of thing mm -hmm. and and I decided that like teaching would be more manageable with a family. So many jokes there because now I like don't want kids. I don't and, like, <laughs> and, like teaching is not manageable. But anyways, like when the pandemic hit and everything was so crazy and everything became started becoming so unsustainable, mm -hmm. I 
literally had the FBI applications like window open mm-hmm. on my computer every single day and I just stared at it for a good five, mm-hmm. ten minutes for so yeah. long, every single day. And it stayed that way for a couple months and I started filling it out and like two weeks later I started social media stuff and then I was like, dang it, my face is too out there to do it's this. Not Maybe easy, not. It's not an easy thing to, to, to choose to step away from no. teaching. A lot of te- a lot of teachers like that have quit it, they will tell you like it was a hard decision to you yes. know they'll say like I'm happy I decided to do it because I have a lot more peace but it was a hard decision it was not an easy decision to, I to feel step like away a lot of that comes from like the guilt of being a teacher yeah. because you know in our career field we're, we're working with children so much of the time that like you kind of feel like you're abandoning them mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and it's you know as much as we love our kids it's just the truth it's not our responsibility to put others ahead of our own health yeah. ahead of our own mental yeah. health like mm-hmm. you ha- you have to take care of yourself first like it's mm-hmm. like when you're on the plane and they're like put your mask on first before you help someone else mm-hmm. like, you yeah. got to do the same thing when you're teaching mm-hmm. and it's it's hard to to step yeah. away and not feel guilty about it i feel like the idea and the mentality that most teachers who are leaving the classroom especially right now are having is you know they would give anything to be able to go back mm-hmm. but like the state and the government like you have to help teachers first because it's just so unsustainable you know you can't put yourself or your family or your loved ones at risk for either like financial issues Mm -hmm. or medical like anxiety kinds of things just for teaching and like sometimes those lines are crossed and you know these teachers would give anything to be able to go back to the classroom but something has to change first it's a lot yeah. of teachers there's a I lot know, of things i want to change I first about to say, it's a lot of teachers i know they wouldn't give nothing to go back to the classroom they like when they leave they chuck <laughs> the deuces and they happy they left and they don't look back mm-hmm. there are some teachers that yeah. wish they could teach in a different environment mm-hmm. yes. and go back yes, but yes, some teachers I, mean. I also think it's just like with the pandemic as a whole mm-hmm. i think what it did was in 2020 we saw like all of these essential standards all of this testing mm-hmm. for the first time people were finally being like no our priority is the kids yeah, we want right. you to do everything for your kids we want you to be able to just basically be there for them emotionally and support right. them mm-hmm. and then it was like then the 2021 school year it was like the whole plane was crashing down right, as everyone crashed. was trying to right. repair it at the same time right and but there was a lot of like we understand this is not going to be a good year because we are still battling a pandemic that we thought was going to be over. Yeah. And then this school year, 20 to 21, 22, it kind of felt like even though we were still like dealing with it in like the first like semester entirely, mm. it was very much this mentality of suddenly all of these governors, all of these states were like, well, this is a regular school year and we don't care. Business was, as usual. Yeah, and yeah. I right. think that's why, especially this year, every single time I speak to like teachers and even in my own experience, which is why I left this year, is because of the fact fact that the last few years have been rough but this year's been worse because there's not been those extra supports and right. it's felt like I feel like there's not enough emphasis on just how delayed socially absolutely. these students are yeah. because mm-hmm. I was teaching like freshmen that came to me as if they were like sixth graders absolutely. which is right. not my exactly. speciality absolutely and it's like they forget to do the like straightforward basic activities Mm -hmm. that they used to do and there's no longer that kind of like I used to struggle because my main reason I wanted to be a teacher was to connect with my students but I always felt like I never had the same connection as I did pre-pandemic it was always agreed because they'd had so much time isolated by themselves and as a teacher like the whole time like even though you had breaks summer everything the whole time you're thinking how do I adapt my curriculum because we can go online at any moment and it just felt like it was exhausting beyond belief and there was no like the fact that teachers said out of nowhere we are willing to do hybrid go online everything and there wasn't really any thanks for it it was just like you're expected to do it and it really felt like teachers for the first time saw all of these other things that's why so many teachers are going to into ed tech because it's like they have seen that they're capable of adapting and doing Mm -hmm. so much stuff yes and i think it's just really powerful to just know like if you are a teacher and you're struggling like it's so easy to think i'm an educator i can't do anything apart from this this is what i was built to do as an educator, the resilience you have and the determination mm-hmm. you have to succeed Absolutely. and that empathy, you will succeed in whatever yes. you put your mind Absolutely. to. You really will. And I think that's the main thing. It's like, 
I think rather than being like, oh, you're a teacher and you feel like you can't do this, it should be more like, well, what skills do you like? What do you like about teaching? And looking into that. And it's like, yes, by all means, try your best to stay into it. If this is what you want to do, then you dedicate yourself to doing it. But also don't feel like you're pressurized into doing it because it's the same mentality of like families where the mum and dad stay together for the kid. We've got to stay together for the kid. Right. And I think to this day, when that I was- That was a great analogy. Yeah, yeah. that's a fantastic yeah. analogy. Like, when I was a child and my parents split, I was devastated. I was like, oh my gosh, my parents are split. Now as an adult, I look at my parents and I'm like, thank God they split. <laughs> right. I would have exactly. been a hot mess because that, that would have just been a it's toxic environment. It's not a environment. healthy environment for and the kid. I remember in my like last few days where I had so much going on and I was like, I can't balance this. I didn't care. I reached a point where I was like, I don't care about reporting this. Every time I got an email about this student's done this, this student's done that, you've not emailed this parent, this child's not done any assignments. I just thought, I don't care. Right now, I wake up and I'm depressed as anything. I'm yeah. walking, I feel like a cloud is above my head mm -hmm. and no one checks in on me. Right. And right. yet I'm, and like, it's that mentality of like, if your cup is so empty, yep. how are you supposed to help other yeah. people? Well, and, and I that's think- that's the thing, I, I hate that, you know, Everyone's always about, well, like everyone preaches, oh, self care, make sure you're yeah. taking care of yourself. But you don't give us the resources nope. or the time nope. to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we just keep piling stuff on people's plates, expecting them to do more yeah. with less. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how am I supposed to how am I supposed to prepare these kids for the next school year when they're still three years behind me? Right. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you know, I'm I'm not talking about my own district because I'm blessed with where I, yeah. I teach. I really like where I teach. But like I know there are people out there that have like a zero dollar budget mm -hmm. that they have to teach all of their subjects with. Um, I saw the episode we were talking about um, the cost of like setting up a classroom and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the other teachers, I didn't even think of this. And I told them, I'm like, I stand corrected. Like they're like high school science. They're like, you know how much stuff I have to buy for right. a science experience? Yeah. I'm like, I we do don't not get a budget at all. I'm like, that is insane. On top of that, these kids, like you said, they're socially, they're so behind. Yep. And like, it's it's almost like they are... Um, they're immature in their yeah. own behaviors mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to interact with other kids. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, that's a huge, huge deficit. And it's hard when, you know, you feel the stress as an educator of like, not only do I have to get them to pass this test, but I also have to get them to, you know, be a functioning human being right. in society. And it, it, that is a huge weight yeah. to sit mm -hmm. on your shoulders. And I feel like for like so many teachers, there's almost kind of like this bubble of like you're telling yourself it's not that bad. Like it's not that bad. And mm -hmm. I, I know that not everyone has this opportunity, but being able to work and like do things in social media being able to kind of get a glimpse of the business world, I saw a respect in that environment mm -hmm. that I right. never had teaching. And, teaching. and it's like, I couldn't unsee that. And let me, let me point out though, cause my husband and I have this talk all the time is like, whenever I complain about stuff with teaching and he, and you know, my husband and I have a, a really good relationship with, with like, you know, we agree to disagree when we do. Mm -hmm. And he points out to me, he's like, listen, I, I respect that teachers are, are suffering with everything mm -hmm. that they're dealing with. He's like, they're not the only careers that are suffering. And I mm. agree. I'm like, there yeah. are other yeah. careers nurses, out there nurses, that get them. treated just as crappy as, as teachers do. And like, even in the business world though, like there, there are certain things that, you know, people get disrespected or not treated, you know, properly for. So please don't take this as a, like right. teachers right. are the only exactly. career that's yeah. mistreated because that's not true. Mm -hmm. right. We're just different. speaking from our own experience right. of what we've dealt with and like trying to kind of enlighten some people as to how bad it has right. been. And like going off of that, you know, like once that bubble was kind of popped for me, there were just things that I couldn't unsee. And I feel like, you know, there's there's so many issues with what teachers are are experiencing kind of going off of what Vinny said is that before the pandemic, there were these list of expectations and obligations that teachers were expected to follow through on. And like that was already becoming a very unmanageable list over mm -hmm. the years and then once the pandemic hit that entire list was just paused and we had an entire new list of obligations and needs and things that we needed to do for for the kids for the parents for the admin and then all of a sudden this year instead of picking and choosing what needs to be done from both lists they were just kind of combined two lists that were already kind of unmanageable for one person mm -hmm. having both of them now expected for teachers to do on their own without the resources yeah. without the, the support and then on the back end you have the kids who are so developmentally behind like socially mm -hmm. academically and then they've also been 
parroting everything that their parents have been saying you know so there's some kids who are like don't worry miss rogers like you're doing great but then there's also some kids who are like my parents say that you don't want to be here because you hate kids like these kids have been listening to either one side or the other of what their parents have been saying Mm -hmm. and like that also is just so mentally draining when you take the expectations from admin that are now so unsustainable and from parents and juggling like the kids being behind and some of the kids like just genuinely believing their parents or they're not their parents their teachers don't want to be there like what's unfortunate what's unfortunate is that like you know there are there are really good days and then there are really bad days yeah Yeah. like on the really good days you're like this is why i do what i do i love my job i'm like gonna get choked up because i think like this Mm -hmm. i'm like this is why i do what i do i have a passion for what i do i love it but then like you know a day like i had the other day and i'm like I'm like, why am I doing something right. where I'm getting paid $47,000 a year to be disrespected by mm-hmm. 10-year-olds and An adult, 40-year-olds? Yeah. Like, why yeah. am I, you know, why am I right. doing this, you well, know? Well, the thing that I've heard, like, when I quit uh, on March 22nd and I, you know, posted my YouTube video about why I quit and some of the situations that I was dealing with, people sent me their stories and the consistent theme was that the kids have a lack of respect for the mm-hmm. teachers, mm-hmm. a lack of respect Uh, there's a lack of respect for the teachers and a lack of consequences for the students. Mm -hmm. And that was so frustrating. It's like, it's almost like this year, uh, teachers' hands are tied. Um, You know, you send a kid to admin and it's like this year, not only do they send them back with a snack or whatever, but it's almost like sometimes they find like a justification for why the kid acted like that. And it's like such a slap in the face to the teacher. Like I sent a kid out one time this past year because she had her phone out and I'm again, one of those teachers i'm not gonna take your phone the first time i see it because like you you 13 years old you got a phone like you know i'm not gonna but if i consistently tell you like hey put your phone up and so this particular day i guess she was just feeling some kind of way and my kids know like bro i'm not gonna disrespect you don't disrespect me i don't tolerate any type of disrespect and so i told her i was like put your phone up so she had a little stanky attitude and she wouldn't put it up and i was like bro bring it to me and she was like no and i was like get out and so she went out in the hallway and I and this was the kid whose mom had to come sit in my class with her because she was acting wow. fool. And when I stepped out in the hallway to talk to her, I was like, yo, first of all, you don't never disrespect me like this. Like you must like, are you having a bad day? Like you have an off day, whatever. But at the end of the day, whether you have an off day or whatever, you're not going to disrespect me, especially in front of 29 other kids. Right. So I was like you know either give me your cell phone or i'm about to call your mama or i'm about to call an admin so i called admin down there he was absolutely useless and i don't even care if he listened to this podcast but it was so disrespectful to me because he literally he was the admin that the kids knew he wasn't gonna do nothing like the kids when they see him coming they was like oh he's not gonna do nothing but just talk to you and send you back to class yeah and so i watched him stand there and this pissed me off so bad because it was such a slap in my face i sat there and watched him talk to this child and say the same you know he was pretty much was like well maybe you were just having a bad day you know you can come with me uh you know maybe you just weren't trying to and i'm looking at him like bruh tell her she can't be disrespectful like this she just disrespected me in front of my entire class it ain't even about the phone at this point it's about the fact that you are defending admin why are you defending her it's disrespectful right. to me as the mm-hmm. educator that you looking at the child and you talk to the child and not talking to me so i finally looked at him i was like you know what I'm gonna let you handle this. And I turned around and walked back in my classroom because at this point, I'm finna, at this point, I'm finna get an attitude with you and it ain't even, it 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 doesn't matter. But that's one of the reasons why teachers are quitting. Lack of consequences for the students. It turns into empty threats. Right, it's so empty. Yeah, it's like, you know, the principal's office, like when I, I'm not trying to say like, well, when I was in school, but like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, know, but like when I, when I went to school, the principal's office was, you didn't want to go to the principal's Mm -hmm. office. Like you you didn't want to go there because you knew you're getting a phone call home and then you're going to get right. in trouble. So, like, today, they these kids don't care. They're no. like, I'll, mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I don't want to send you to the office. Please just do mm-hmm. what I'm asking you to do. Right. I'm like, you, you could go to any kid in my class and, like, I build relationships with mm-hmm. all of my same, kids. Same. Mm-hmm. We have a mutual respect. Same. But they know, you know, you respect me, I respect you, mm-hmm. that's how it goes. And after giving them multiple chances to correct yep. whatever behavior it is that I'm trying to correct, if they're not listening, what is my next step? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen, if you're not going to do what I'm asking you to do, I'm going to have to tell you to go talk to Mrs. So-and-so. Right, and right. like, if they, you know, if they don't listen, they go up there, you know, and 
some sometimes you send them up and nothing happens and they right. come back and you're like feel so disrespected well and then that teaches the kid you can't you do can anything do. Yeah. nothing's gonna happen to me if i misbehave and i hate to, to sound like that because you know no kid wants to be bad or make bad choices it's a it's a communication mm -hmm. but it's like what are you doing to help the teachers? Right. right. Yeah. What are you doing to help? When that year. behavior goes so unchecked, mm -hmm. that can escalate to the point. I have a story of something that, that has happened been my, at that has my, been my year. old yeah. school yeah. this year. Same, like, same. This is how insane some of these some of these situations are getting and this happened at my old school this year mm. um like a little backstory a couple months ago there was a huge gang brawl at the school like adults were coming from off campus like to help these kids were just like like a like a gang like a gang brawl. oh my god like w there are videos of it that were circulating on the news they had to have that, oh. the police just come and stay at the school for wow. multiple days admin tried to break up the fight and admin got dog pie see i don't break up yeah, no fight so, bro because if you say, hit I'm me my I'm hands on a kid then we all going to jail i'm gonna be at the back so no. yeah i'm not <laughs> going a cup then two weeks ago the school got a call and like just warning like this is a really serious story and like this happened to my to my best friend the school mm. got a call that room 127 had a bomb in it that a kid Nate with a specific name in like they gave the description of this kid like was gonna blow up this this it was my best friend's room the room right next to where I used to teach mm -hmm. and that um, but there was also rumor that there was supposed to be another gang brawl so they couldn't evacuate the kids because they didn't know if it was if the threat was a cover for being able to get everyone out of the school for the fight to happen so they just had to sit in a code red all day and then the police came in and was like banging on my friend's door and was like i know that you're not supposed to open the door during these these like it's not a drill it's the police like we have to get into up. that room and he didn't have a kid that exactly matched the description but he had a kid with the same name with a kind of maybe similar to, like the backpack color that she had was different mm -hmm. and so then they had to like it was a whole thing and never could figure out which kids it was it I don't, I don't know. They just sat in code red all day long because this is where unchecked behavior eventually gets yeah, to. And I think that is dangerous. It goes hand in hand. What I noticed and what I got really frustrated about, mm -hmm. um, and this is what led me to a point where I was like, they're not even putting these students like mental health first. No, so, no. So oh, if, no. If they're putting the students first, they're not even thinking about mine. Right, and it just yeah. got to a point where like, I remember being in a school and our like mental health was through the roof. You would get an email being like, hey, X amount of students, this student is going to be out for three weeks. They've basically checked into the mental health hospital yeah. down the road yeah. because they've attempted. And you're just like, oh my gosh. And you have to just carry on like normal. Nothing and COVID happened. COVID did that. Yeah. Too. A lot of COVID. As, and you're dealing with all of this mm -hmm. while you're also dealing with your own trauma of right. having to go through this. And it just very much feels like you're just gaslit all the time. Yeah, all where the time. Well, as soon as you say, like, you want this, it feels like it's never actually getting handled. And no. then yeah. what annoys me is it's then, like, you then look at a government level and you hear all of these states with all these, like, bills about, like, parents needing all their curriculum and you can't say this in your classroom. And it's just like, but what about, like, you gaslight us into being like, well, it's about the kids. It's not about the money. It's not about the fact that you want to leave because you're selfish but you don't care about the kids you just right. care about doing whatever the agenda money. suits you right. right to then get people to vote for you and that's what exactly. irritates me and you know what like in in that kind like that mindset of like well no one cares about my mental health like i'm i'm a very much i'm on the boat of like if it comes between you know me having my time or me like making more money i will choose my time always mm -hmm. because time is precious right and yeah. like it it, it, in the past like tell me you have never felt guilty for taking a day off or oh, like, absolutely. like a sick day or absolutely. anything like that i always felt so guilty for taking any kind of sick day and this year honestly when i've been like even even so drained to the point where i'm just like i can't function today mm -hmm. right like, I was like, I'm taking a sick day. Yep. I'm taking that day because yeah. I have them for a reason. Yeah. It's not my responsibility right. to figure out if you have a sub for me or not. Right. I'm like, I need to make sure that I'm right. mentally stable to right. even walk my butt into yes. that building. Yeah. And that's so, one of the reasons why teachers are quitting this year. Like, yeah, we're tired of feeling you, gaslit and yes, going to work and teachers, when we don't feel good. Right. And it's like, why Why are we made to feel bad when we need to take a day off? If you ain't got a sub, that ain't got nothing to do with and me. It, I need and, a rest. And here's the thing for me is like, 
if if I died tomorrow, that school would not hesitate right. to replace me before your 100%. obituary was up. So yeah. why am I putting myself in harm's way and not putting my own like mental health first? Mm-hmm. To be able to continue doing what I'm doing, and it's the gaslighting. It's the gaslighting from admin, teachers, uh, Mm -hmm. county office. Uh, It's like, why are why are y'all gaslighting us? Like we we see what we deal with in our classrooms every day. What what we got to lie for? We ain't just making stuff up. And there was such a switch because in like. When COVID first hit, oh. it was if you even have a sn- like runny nose, right. you Do stay at home. Come. And for the first time, teachers were like, oh my God, I'm given permission to actually stay at home and get right. covered. Like, and then literally it just switched to yep. now we're back in person and there's no subs. And it's like you have people going in that have someone in their house that has COVID mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, put a mask on and just come in. And it's like the shift mm-hmm. is so like, right. you just look at it and you're like, you went from being like, oh, we need to be careful because we don't right. want to spread. And now it's showing once again that you well, would rather a teacher come in even and put the, the health even the the perspective of like teachers at the beginning of the, of the pandemic when everyone went into quarantine and we were all like just expected to shift to virtual teaching overnight mm-hmm. oh teachers are heroes i yeah. couldn't do what you do and and now it's like everyone hates us again and i'm like right. what like what did we do i'm like I- one of my <laughs> old mentors from like from my first school my mentor teacher told me that like exactly what you were saying a second ago i keep hitting my mic is that if you were to get hit by a bus, like God forbid, if you were gonna get hit by the bus, that before your obituary is up, they would already have your job posting because like Mm -hmm. work is work and like that's why you take time for your family. And like the gaslighting isn't even just with mental health at this point. And I feel Mm -hmm. like that's something that a lot of people who aren't teachers don't understand is even with real medical issues, teachers are being gaslit. Like one lady sent me her story and just a warning, this this can be a really triggering story, Mm -hmm. but this woman was pregnant in class and felt like she was starting to have a miscarriage and she called her admin and was like I need to go to the hospital I think I'm losing my child like I need to go right now and she waited and waited and felt like forever had passed by and she's like I'm sure it's just like my panic but looked and realized 30 40 minutes had gone by I can believe and it. by mm-hmm. the end I of the day it. like she hadn't she had no one to stay with the I kids and she found the admin and she's like like she literally just had a miscarriage in the middle of class I in front it. of her students I later it. found her admin her oh I forgot no, you, ain't you forget. forgot. That yeah. makes me disgusted. That's people are like, I'm disgusted. why are teachers like, leaving? That's, yes. that's why teachers are leaving. But it's because you know no what? one cares. They no one cares. And a lot of people have sent because I I started a new series once I quit called Teacher Stories, mm-hmm. where I've been sharing a lot of different teacher stories. And it's on, doing awesome. Go check it out. Yeah. Hey, my YouTube. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But like for real though, y'all, the stories I have literally wept over some of these teacher stories. Like I have it's wept ridiculous. because it's not mm-hmm. right. It's not right. It's like it's such an injustice how some of these teachers are being treated i mean you got teachers like it's normal now we normalizing and teachers being hit kicked bit right. slapped. Yeah. like that's not that's not okay the amount of stories and like y'all normalizing it because they got a 504 or iep last no, time i that, checked that you should be, last time i checked mm-hmm. you should be able to slap your teacher because it don't say you can slap your teacher and your you iep hear about the teacher that was dealing with special needs kids and the kid literally put her in the hospital because he like she tried to calm him down he was having an episode she was like hey let's go calm down let's go to another room let's Mm -hmm. isolate from other kids and this kid had a history of also hurting other students Mm -hmm. so she tried to separate them and she called for help and by the time people walked into the classroom she was on the ground Mm -hmm. like was unresponsive Mm -hmm. she had a concussion she had to have surgery Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. like like that was my you know like i'm not trying to talk yeah I I know there are people from my school, my old school that listen right, to yeah. the podcast, but like, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't tell anything that didn't happen. Right. To me. Like, just that, it's my, from ex- our experiences. Yeah. It's my yeah. experience. Like I, that was my first three years of teaching mm-hmm. and why I, I almost left because yeah. it was like, Every year I would have, you know, you had like 20 really amazing kids Mm -hmm. that were sweethearts. And then you had one kid that went through a lot of childhood trauma and therefore had a lot of behavioral Mm -hmm. issues. And like that happened. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that. Like if teachers had the supports in place to deal with those kids, that would be a completely different story. Like the kids Mm -hmm. having those trauma is not their fault. But like teachers don't even have the supports to 
steal and help those right. kids. Because that Sorry, was continue. hard for you. That yeah, kid. That, like I, and, but I, I had multiple of those. Like yeah. it wasn't just like one specific kid. But like to have that as your first year teaching experience, mm -hmm. you're all excited to be a teacher mm -hmm. and like this is my passion. And then getting hit, kicked, punched, scratched. Mm -hmm. I had right. my, my wrist. I went to school. This with is two so sprained crazy wrists. to me. Yeah. So it was like December and one of my students, like he, he had a breakdown at the end of the day and was like throwing desks and chairs and flipping everything. And this was, he was seven years old. This was in second grade. Yeah. And um, I like, you know, I hadn't been like trained in any kind right. of like they holds don't train or us. anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'm standing in my room and I had an evacuation plan for my students. So like when yeah. this kid had any kind of like behavior like that, I would send them to the class next door. They'd mm -hmm. go sit by her board. And um, I got too close to him and I turned my head mm. to look at the door and the other teacher next door was like, Lauren, watch out. And he like grabbed, he grabbed my wrists and twisted them backwards and like, I, like it sounds ridiculous that a seven year old was able to do that, but like they're strong, they when they're angry like that mm -hmm. and they're like in that almost like seeing red phase and they can't control themselves. Yeah, it's you know and I you had to go to the hospital after that. Didn't you? I, like well, did you have to, to get the, stuff on your wrist? Well, the thing is, I didn't know anything about oh, like yeah. you know being you know when you get assaulted at work mm -hmm. and you're supposed to fill out like workman's comp and all. Like I was brand new, I didn't right. know. Right. And so I went to my own doctor and mm -hmm. got like, you know, the, I don't know, I guess it was a diagnosis right, or yeah, whatever yeah. you right. call, about, you know, he said, you know, you have two minor sprains in both your wrists. And so I just had to keep them wrapped. Like I didn't have like a cast or anything like that. Was that student but, back in your class? Like, no, he, he was not for a little bit, but like then for a came little back. Bit, yeah, right. but, for a little bit. Yeah. For, for a little while. But like I, um, so I, I went back to work and I gave them the, the documentation and they were like, well, you didn't go to our doctor. And how oh was you supposed God. to know that? And I'm like, no one told me. Right. You know? No one told me what right. I was supposed to do. And I had to teach with right. two right. sprained wrists yeah. because I was a brand new teacher. I had three sick days yeah. built in my bank. Yeah. Like teaching second grade, trying to write with two stra sprained wrists. Right. Are you kidding me? You know what else that really like stood out to me from your story is when you prefaced with, I wasn't trained in holds. And like, at that point, they don't you know, train. But like, we're but I'm saying teachers. Like, we shouldn't have to be trained in that's, holds. That's true. But they, I mean, there are also but sometimes, yeah, you know, sometimes there are also have. students in younger grade levels, yes. especially that like have have behaviors that require it. And, you yes. know, right. but there, think, there are specific trainings for that. But I had not received any of that at that mm -hmm. point. I was a brand new teacher. Right. And yeah. I'm like that. Honestly, that's. A, that was like a, a core memory for me because right. it really it really affected me and right. it still and does. And it could have been a defining moment for you as a teacher. Like after that, right. you could have decided. Well, and I, I, I think that, you know, that really, <laughs> not even just that specific incident, but just me teaching at that school, it was just not a good environment for me. Like mm -hmm. the, the teachers at that school work their butts off and mm -hmm. they are right. they are fabulous teachers. I'm not saying anything against, against any of those teachers at that school because I know how hard they work. Right. But they do not get the support that they Absolutely need there. Not. Right. And it's Absolutely you know, not. I had to I had to leave yeah. and I couldn't, yeah. you know, that's more exactly, power to you yeah. if you're if that's right. what works for you and you're happy in that environment i'm so happy for you but yeah. i couldn't handle it yeah and it, that's like, why it, i ended up it was leaving. too much for me yeah and that's why was, i ended up leaving that's what's also I, so sad is like yes there are people who are <laughs> able to handle that but like you shouldn't have to handle that at work like there should be systems in place procedures in place to protect people like yeah. both mentally and physically like right. i get it there are kids that have those needs for the restraints and the holds and things like that but there should be people in place right. never, or trainings in place never in my wildest imagination like when i when I was going through um, like my early childhood degree in college, did, you did think, I ever right. think that that was going to be my experience mm -hmm. of school? Yeah. Ever, ever. But, and I, yeah. like, it was such a shock to me that mm -hmm. I feel like it really, it really did define me as a right. teacher. And then like, even going to my new school, I was like, I'm like, just because, you know, that happened to me and that was my past. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, and I, I feel like, honestly, I, I will be a hundred percent with you guys. I was not, I did not feel like a great teacher at that school. I did not like academic teaching. Okay. Yeah. But like yeah. with me being able to handle like the classroom management and not having any supports, like I did not feel like a good teacher yeah. at that school. And, and I, I yeah. it's sad. It's sad. I feel bad for like when I got written, when I, the day I remember the day I quit, I called my twin 
because like if you you know if you watch my story they tried to add a 31st kid to a class mm -hmm. that was already full um i had two students in there that were autistic one student in there that was like severely autistic i had a lot of kids that had different behavior problems mm -hmm. i had kids that had come back from the alternative school i had a lot of sped kids there were a lot of behaviors in that class and that was the class that i took to lunch and so i didn't realize that like the class was stressing me out to the point where i was like physically i didn't know i was getting sick until i was like being mm -hmm. put into you know the back of the ER yeah. I mean into the back of the ambulance and it's like the day that I quit I remember standing there crying and it was the last period of the day and I remember I just felt so disrespected I felt like they didn't value me they didn't care that I was getting sick they didn't care about my health it was like they was running around putting out so many fires all the time that they mm -hmm. didn't have time to help you know what I'm saying help with classroom behaviors or help with stuff like that mm -hmm. and I remember my my older sister is a nurse and she was like yo your body is trying to tell you like as much as you want to stay and you love being a teacher bro your body is trying to tell you you cannot do this right and I will never forget because a lot of teachers can't quit you know mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people out there that'll say you know um, why teachers always complaining all the time if you don't like it just quit there's a lot of people they can't just quit people you know have what families people like, have right, like yeah. health people, obligations right and so I need right. insurance I remember the teacher that stood there with me. I will never, ever forget this. I remember the teacher that stood there with me because I also struggle with mental health stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I take medicine. I try to like I manage my stuff as best I can. But some situations are too stressful and they trigger you. Right. Yeah. And so just like the kids get triggered, us as adults, when we struggle with mental illness, we get triggered. It takes a minute for us to calm down off of that. Mm -hmm. And so I remember at the end of the day, like I was just crying and I will never forget that teacher standing in there and she talked to me the whole time and she didn't have to stand there you know what I'm saying but she right. knew I was at a point she knew I was at a breaking point because I had already dealt with so much in the three and a half months that I had been back and I remember when I put them keys on my desk I ain't take none of my stuff with me I was like I gotta get this is a terrible environment mm -hmm. like I have to get out of here and I remember I put my keys on my desk I got in my car and I drove away and I felt bad because I felt like I was leaving that teacher behind because that's the kind of environment that we put in that when we get ready to leave or when we're able to step away, the teachers who can't leave, right. you know what I'm saying? You feel like you are leaving them right. behind. Now that teacher, I did find out like she, a month after I quit, she was able to step away, but I just, the the struggle and the PTSD P, uh, teaching has caused a lot of these teacher mental health problems and PTSD and I, I hate to like and I'm getting like teary eyed talking right. about this but like it's, it's hard yeah, it's a lot man, like, I, I don't like to to talk about it because it makes me feel like I'm complaining about my job right. or it makes me feel like I'm over exaggerating what I've experienced but, but like not. in all reality it was a trauma to me right Mm -hmm. like it, yeah. as much as Absolutely. as much as our students go through trauma like the teachers, teachers that do. deal with that kind of stuff like it's just as much a trauma right. for them and right. it's it's really mentally taxing it's very mentally and it, taxing it's so interesting to see the people who usually are like well if teachers hate it so much just leave just go get a different job are now the same people who are now like there's a teacher shortage why right. is there a teacher yeah. shortage? Yeah. Where like, are they all but going? No one's, but no one's willing to make the changes exactly. to stop that. The no one's willing exactly. to. And, and like I, I've said it before, I'm like, teachers are not paid enough for all the work that they do. I'm not asking to be paid as much as a surgeon or a, like, I, I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I just want to make enough to pay my bills. Right. Like if it wasn't honestly for me doing social media and right. work with brands and things like that, right. I, wouldn't be I able could to. not afford mm -hmm. my life. And right. like. My husband, and it's it's open and out there. I don't hide this fact. Like, my husband has ulcerative colitis. So, really, like, part of the reason I have to stay in education is because of my health insurance. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to pay for my husband's infusions that he gets for right. his medication. And, like, honestly, the, the one school I taught at before, um, which is another major reason I was looking for a different building, was mm -hmm. because like my husband on my insurance my husband's medication was going to cost me twelve hundred dollars oh, yeah. a month mm -hmm. and I, that was more than i made mm -hmm. right like, for two weeks yeah and i'm like i can't afford to live Absolutely. so like right. you know on top of dealing with all the stress you have at work right. you then bring that stress home with right. you and you're like i can't afford to pay my bills because right. i make eleven hundred dollars a paycheck mm -hmm. and i can't afford to pay for my health and or my health bills right, or whatever right, my yeah, medical right. bills and it's you know i don't think 
and I'm not trying to say like other people don't have these stressors because I'm sure they do and right. I, I see you, I hear you, but like people think that every teacher is just complaining and, and it's not, not the fact. Right. It's, not. It, it's we reality. Just, it's yeah, Vinny, it's just feel, what it is. Vinny, did you feel like when you were saying, you know, you were saying like at the end, you was just like, I don't care because I'm so like mentally exhausted and depressed. Like, did you feel? Yeah, and I feel like it's also like one of the most harrowing things for me was I always went into teaching and education thinking like, well, clearly everyone that's here is a good person at heart. Mm -hmm. They care about kids. They care about making a difference. And unfortunately, what I've noticed in my own experience is nine times out of ten, the people that are the ones that stay longer, that level up, that become admin, that go into these positions, they lose touch of what it's like to be a teacher yeah. and they choose what they want to do and i've had so many mentors out of all of the mentors i've had i've only i can only label like one that was actually a good quality mentor that raised me up right. every other mentor i had told me everything i did wrong made me feel absolutely awful and like it's all in consuming being a teacher so right. when you're spending all of your time your weekends your evenings planning out things and you're just so worried about your students to be told but you could do more yeah it yeah. just feels like well what more can i do it's like right. this it's is my defeating. life yeah it's it's defeating. Defeating. and it just makes you feel like i remember my first like student teaching i had such a like negative experience that like to this day, anytime I'd be observed, I would just immediately be like, they are going to fire me on the spot because they kept trying to kick me off my stressful. teacher training course because right. they didn't like me and they were just like, we don't deem you as a teacher because one person felt like that. And I think like people don't realize just how triggering and traumatizing it is because I still like to this day, like I sometimes have nightmares of being in my student Same. teaching, having yeah. observations and literally feeling like my life was going to fall apart because one person did right. not like my style of do teaching. Do you have dreams about, uh, do you have dreams your, about your wrist being in the classroom? Sprained. Like, not not from that anymore. I think I, I've separated myself mm -hmm. in, you know, I've I've experienced good environment experiences in the last three years mm -hmm. that it's, you know, I've kind of separated that. But, yeah. you know, I, I the second year that I was at my new school, I had to go back to my old school for my master's degree. I needed um, mm -hmm. permission slip signed from the parents of the students that I had videotaped mm -hmm. for my like RESA in Ohio. Mm -hmm. You have RESA. So... I went, I literally set foot in the building to come and get these forms and I, like my anxiety yeah. just triggered and yeah. I was, I was so on edge and mm -hmm. I was like, I need to just get in, get the forms, yeah. say hi and get out. And right. like, I, but like, it's, it's, I hate to sound dramatic, but you're like, you're not being dramatic, you're not dramatic, you're not being but dramatic. I feel that way, you yeah. know, I feel like That's I'm being way, dramatic, but like really it was a no. trauma to That's me. That's the way yeah. society and it really was. To make it's also feel. like what I always notice as well is whenever I was teaching, I was always told you could do more. There's yeah. always something when they observe always. you, there's one thing that they will always pick that you could be doing this and you're just like, okay, but I'm exhausted. This is my life. This is what I dedicate right. everything to do. Right. You've come in, you've seen a one hour lesson and you're telling me there's still more that I can do. Right. Right. And then anything else ever I've done outside of teaching with all my social media, everything, all I ever get told is, you are amazing at this. You are yeah. destined to do this. Whereas teaching, they'd say, you're a great teacher, but you can do X, Y, Z. Right. Yeah. And it just right. became so like, there, there is never enough that you can do. And I remember being sat in a meeting and they were like, we have these three voluntary committees. You don't get paid for them. But right. you should, but yeah. If you I'm literally get, on three voluntary committees. <laughs> but, and they'd say, but if you want to get highly effective in this column, then being on a committee is Which one is of the bull. things. No, and that's it's like, ridiculous. Well, pay us then. Like that's right. what right. I want to be paid right. for my time. I right. don't, so one of my, one of my slogans on my channel is I don't get paid enough so of mm -hmm. course I always have people commenting that are like well so many people in America get paid less than that or so many mm -hmm. people in America okay but so many people in America don't have master's degrees or don't have mm -hmm. whatever and I'm not trying to not trade schools at all because like those are very important and people mm -hmm. can be very successful but if you're going to expect these individuals to mm -hmm. go to college get bachelor's degree get master's degrees in some cases then pay for that like mm -hmm. it's, it's not crazy to think that if you're going to expect I, all of these degrees that they should be making a certain amount of money to be able to pay for those degrees and i don't think you know <sighs> i don't like the argument of like well there are people that make less than than you because right. Here's the thing. Everybody yes. is struggling. Mm. And I think the problem is nobody is getting paid what they're deserving. Right. Not yeah. just teachers, right. but across the board. Right. Right. No one is getting paid 
the amount of money that they deserve for the work right, that they right, do. Right, I saw right. this thing online, and it might have even been Jim Carrey who said this. I might be completely wrong, so don't come for me if I am. But he, it was like this idea of insulin costs this amount of money but medicine that will help like people who are getting through like drug withdrawals and things mm -hmm. like that that can be free like that's not okay and jim I, I think it was jim carrey that made the comment of like other people's struggles is not what's holding you back like talk to the pharmaceutical companies like that's the bad guy not people with other needs right. so we like, don't want to tear each other right. down like, to yeah. you know to make a point like, for ourselves if you're like, not making enough money mm -hmm. it's not other people who are making more than you who are the problem it's mm -hmm. your employer it's the yeah. system of like right. oh i can get away with paying you this much it's not right. other people it's not right. a well you don't deserve more money because i don't get more money right. that's ridiculous well we know that this uh episode has been really heavy <laughs> they flat they flashed us you know like 10 minutes ago but you know oh, we I didn't want to we didn't want to cut the conversation short because it's definitely a needed conversation yeah. but if you out there and you struggling and you struggling with the decision to step away from teaching or stay in teaching you know know that you have to do what's best for you and your exactly. family not what's best for the school and, and if, so we, if you're somebody i don't mean to cut you off I'm no, sorry. It's okay. Go ahead, if, if you're someone that you know cannot step away from the classroom mm -hmm. like you don't have that option please try to seek out some kind of, mm -hmm. of help Coaching. whether that's yeah. a counselor whether that's a best friend to talk to whether that's a therapist just someone to talk through the things that you're dealing with yeah. because it's mental It'll health is so important and we don't talk about it enough in education. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you are struggling with the decision, there's not a right and wrong answer. There's a right for you mm -hmm. answer. And that's bottom line. It doesn't matter what anyone else says to you. It's a right for you and your yeah. family answer. And also, just bear in mind, like I have so many teachers that reach out to me and they say, like, I feel like I'm not doing enough. And I feel like just the fact that if you've been teaching and you've stuck it out mm -hmm. and there's been times where you've been like, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't do it. But you are still like finding joy in your job and you are deciding to go through with it by all means I feel like that takes so much courage and yeah. I feel like you just need to know yeah. that you are doing an amazing job and amazing. if no one's told you that because there's a lot of times where you don't mm -hmm. get told that you are absolutely amazing at everything and yes. the world is so grateful for all of your hard work yeah. so we love y'all best yeah. friends thank you guys for there. tuning in for us th with us this week and we can't wait to see you next week and we just love y'all stay safe yeah. out there stay, stay safe, safe out there Bye. take care of yourself no matter your occupation Square take care of yourself me. Oh, don't <laughs> delete that part. Delete that part. No, don't do that. Don't do that.